Let's look at the mythic case of the giant hogweed, a legendary invasive plant that is very real with potentially catastrophic consequences. I love music and I have a rather large record collection. One of my favorite bands is the English rock group Genesis and they wrote one of the greatest songs about gardening, The Return of the Giant Hogweed, which appears on Nursery Crime, their third studio album, which was released in November 1971. I might add this record is one of the favorites of Getty Lee of Rush, probably my all-time favorite band. Return of the Giant Hogweed is about the toxic plant that was, in singer Peter Gabriel's words, captured in Russia and brought to England by a Victorian explorer. The lyrics suggest the plant is attempting to take over the human race, which is obviously an exaggeration, but it's rather fitting for this freaky flowering perennial. At first glance, the giant hogweed looks harmless except for its size. The plant can reach heights of 4 to 5 meters, that's 13 to 16 feet. It looks a little like a gargantuan version of Queen Anne's lace, its umbrella-like cluster of flowers standing high above its serrated leaves. Giant hogweed is a relative of the carrot family. This unique plant features ribbed hollowed stems with distinctive dark reddish purple spots and stiff hair-like white bristles. Their small white flowers are arranged at the tops of the stems in broad umbrella-shaped groups. Each flower head can produce approximately 1,500 winged seeds that are flattened and oval in shape. Because the seeds are relatively light in weight, they are easily dispersed by wind or water, and they can readily stick to clothes or animal fur, enabling them to be spread far and wide. With one giant hogweed plant and its flowers capable of producing a total of 50,000 seeds, it's no wonder that it's a plant to be feared. What makes giant hogweed a plant to be feared is its sap which causes phytophotodermatitis in humans. What's that? Imagine the power of a super poison ivy that causes the most awful blisters and scars. Casual contact with the giant hogweed sap prevents your skin from being able to protect itself from sunlight. Its toxic chemicals cause severe burns when exposed to UV light from the sun. This phototoxic reaction can start within 15 minutes of contact. If it gets on your skin, you should immediately wash with soap and cold water and avoid further exposure to sunlight for at least 48 hours, unless you want to experience the worst nightmarish sunburn you can imagine. It's nasty. The more sap you touch, the greater damage it causes. And don't even think of rubbing your eyes. You could go blind. Painful blisters caused by giant hogweed can result in scars that last anywhere from a few months to several years. If you think vampires hate sunlight, you'll have it even worse if you touch this peculiar plant, which can cause long-term sunlight sensitivity. Not even a fashionable pair of Ray-Bans will make you look cool after giant hogweed does a number on your face. How bad can one plant be? Well, a teenage boy was working a summer landscaping job in Virginia one year when he accidentally came into contact with giant hogweed. He said he didn't notice anything unusual until he went to shower that evening. He told People Magazine, I started rubbing my face, and at first I thought it was just a little bit of skin, but then big chunks of my face started falling off. His face looked like he had been in a fire. In fact, doctors in the burn center at the hospital told him that he had to avoid the sun for the next six months. That's pretty bad. Eliminating giant hogweed is a tall task. Remember, this is a plant that can grow twice as tall as an NBA center. Like many invasive species, getting rid of giant hogweed is easier said than done. Once established, giant hogweed can take up to five years to be completely eradicated due to its ability to grow large colonies from a single plant that is producing an abundance of seeds. It outcompetes native plant species for habitat, and its presence along the banks of rivers and streams can intensify soil erosion. Despite repeated warnings, the plant was often favored by gardeners for its ornamental appearance 
until only recently. It was brought to New York first in 1917, Ontario by 1950, and it can now be found throughout the Midwest, including the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, as well as throughout most provinces in Canada. Giant hogweed is also a problem for native plants. It grows in such a manner that it hogs the space, crowding out other plants like the weed that it is. To this day, giant hogweed remains a royal pain in the United Kingdom. In London, this giant headache of a plant delayed construction for the 2012 Summer Olympics as workers had to eliminate thousands and thousands of these wicked weeds that were covering sites planned for athletic competitions. I figure Peter Gabriel and Genesis must have been about 40 years ahead of their time when they wrote Return of the Giant Hogweed. Authorities continue to strongly advise all people, especially children, to stay away from giant hogweed. As the lyrics of the song go, Turn and run, nothing can stop them. Around every river and canal, their power is growing. Stamp them out, we must destroy them. If you see giant hogweed, think pretty. Pretty dangerous. I hope you've enjoyed what I've shared. And please subscribe to my channel to follow more cases of invasive species. Thanks for watching.